These are underground narrow vein nickel sulphide mines and uh, we mine nickel as a main, main commodity and copper and cobalt as a byproduct. Our biggest challenges is with cost. Before the, the GFC during the uh, mining boom, we were focusing on production. But now that the uh, prices have come off and things have constrained, then we actually have to think about costs. And so we're looking at better and more efficient ways of mining so we can reduce the costs and um, keep everybody in a job. The way that SERPAC helps us is in two dominant ways. First of all, it's to find the resource to help define, explore and communicate that through to the engineers, the surveyors and the other stakeholders that are involved in the mining process. We're just coming onto an ore heading in through here. For nickel, as you can see, it's very visual. So we actually can identify and estimate the grade just visually. So on our drill spacing, it actually can be quite wide. In this instance, up to 40 meter spaced holes, which means that we can locate more with less. But what that means is that we have less information. So we need a, a three dimensional software package such as SERPAC that allows us to extrapolate and tie these drill holes together to create a true model of the contact so that we can actually look at this and say, based on our drilling and our interpretations, you know, we predicted that this drive would hit this contact right now and so be it. The advantages of the 3D model in this instance is that if we don't hit it where we expect, then we know instantly that something is wrong and we need to revisit the data. In this instance, we're only a couple of metres out, so that's within the tolerances of the data. And that, I think, is probably the most powerful use of the 3D modelling, not only to try and interpret and understand what's there in the spatial three-dimensional sense, but also as a communication tool and it allows us to feed that back into a living model and, uh, and expand and, and try and develop our drives so we can maximise our ore and minimise our waste. The second part of SERPAC is actually monitor what we're doing so that we can feed that back into the model so that the strike drives are put in on the right location, that we're not wasting our development, not wasting our decline and SERPAC is the means to do that. What I'm doing now is I've brought in the infrastructure that the engineers have, have brought up, like have, have put in for all our development, including our decline. So where we're just going to zoom in is where we were and we can determine in real time exactly where this drive is in relation to the model, i.e. do we hit it too soon, do we hit it too late, do we hit it just right? And this is the power of, of SERPAC as a communication tool. We can, we can visualise an interpretation, lock it in in three-dimensional, and then we can bring in all the drilling, all the infrastructure, the development, the headings, and know instantly whether we're on track. It's better than we expected, worse than we expected. Do we need to re-change it or is it all okay? Every time the contact moves, the position of the hole will change. And uh, we use SERPAC to actually predict where that intersection point will be and then adjust the, the dip and the azimuth of the hole so we can target that. SERPAC allows us also to link the departments together. So the surveying, the engineering and the geologists all use the same data sets, they use the same string files, they're all using a living data set so that we're all talking from the same page. SERPAC ensures that I can see how we're going in three dimensions and um, I can print that out or I can show other people on the screen and I can work in with other departments to ensure that we're getting the maximum amount out in the quickest possible time. Some of the key tools I use in SERPAC are uh, digitising tools, um, drill hole designs, block modding, uh, triangulation, um, 3D modelling. It allows us to plan ahead, it allows us to plan for failure and it allows us to see where we need to go. I've just done a summary log of what was drilled in the past 24 hours. With all this information we then take all this, put it back into SERPAC and then we bring it up with all the interpretations that have been done with other geologists on site. So then when we finish looking at our information between myself, the Chief Geologist Mark, and also our project geologist Laura, we just make a decision in everything that we're going to do, helping to actually mine this with the engineers. So we can actually plot that up in quickly with a relation to the other drilling and make a decision there and then whether to can the hole or to continue drilling for another day. So that quick turnaround allows us to optimise our drilling and it does tie it all together. So this is actually quite a good result for us today and uh, it will actually mean more ore in the new ore body so we're all pretty happy.